Hello my loves, welcome back to my art channel. If you're new here, my name is Tamsin and I'm the artist behind Iron Alien Illustration. Here's some of my artworks and today I'm going to show you my entire digital colouring process. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to begin with, I start with a colour draft, which is essentially what you can see here. It's a very messy placement of colours for certain aspects. What I do is I actually do it on separate layers change around the colours a bit using this tool up here, the hue saturation brightness and once I'm happy with it then I'll merge all those layers together and that's essentially when I get this. Um, because this is part of a series then I've already included these because I have just copied them from a previous drawing and put them into here. It kind of speeds up the process a bit and it looks exactly how I wanted it to look anyway so it's no different really than doing it by hand, except that doing by hand would take longer. I feel like with digital art, just repurpose wherever you can. Okay, so once I have my colour draft, I then create another layer underneath this layer here, which is the line work. And then I'm going to start on the skin. So I pick my brush and just go in and start painting in the skin. Once I have the skin painted in, then I will get another layer on top of this and set it to clipping mask. This is going to be my blush layer and I'm going to do a couple of these. I like to make it slightly darker and a little bit more reddish depending on the tone for the first shade. And then for the second shade, I'll probably go in to a little bit more of a pinker colour and add that onto like the very outer corners and her nose. I use my shade and blend brush to do this, but you can use any kind of airbrush. Bring down the size. I kind of like to have, like when I start with the nose, try and have it around the same size as the nose. Now looking at this now, I'm a bit unsure about the color of the nose of the shading I feel like it might be a bit too desaturated and too red orange for the scheme I'm going for as you can see like I've pressed harder on the nose and that's why it's darker there probably gonna see me do that a lot I like to you know zoom in zoom out quite a bit then with the shading I will also put it on other areas a little darker give it a bit more depth to her skin and then we always do the hands roughly to hmm, maybe about her wrist um, for the first like shading layer. Here is the second shading. And I'm just going to put a bit more on her nose, a bit on the outer sides of her face. And I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to erase any parts that have got onto her arm here. Over here, I'm going to go in and do these fingertips again. You want to press lightly with your airbrush. I mean, you don't want them to be super red. I think I've made these ones here a bit too dark. But it's personal preference. If you want them to stand out loads, then of course press down as hard as you like. And then I'm probably going to just do a little very soft over the top like that just because I want to blend what I've already got there a little bit. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the shadows and I do a little shadow underneath her chin. Sometimes I extend this right down to her collarbone but lately I've not really been liking the look it gives. And then I'm going to add a few to like things like this where her um, like little neck ribbon is hanging down. I mean depending on where the colors coming in i don't tend to always be too especially with these kinds of pieces i don't don't tend to really think about um the light placement as much so i just kind of put where i feel like the shadows should be and then we're going to do her nose and i start from the edges of the eyebrows and i just kind of bring it down to her nose and then i kind of try and shape it from there I really like doing this a couple of times where I kind of put a little bit of shadow underneath um, her eye. I don't do this all the time, but I do think that 
it can look pretty cool. Then I'm going to add a bit under her bottom lip. And then from here, I'm going to lower the opacity. You just want to lower this to your personal preference. Lately, I'm getting lighter and lighter, like just wanting a tiny bit of shade. And then I will just erase this part here, um, just to make it not so harsh and try and soften up these edges a little bit. Then you can make this darker, make it lighter. I think we might stick with about there this time. And now we're gonna add in a little screen layer and you're gonna need your airbrush again for this. So we're gonna highlight around her nose. I got this lovely tip from Sonia Stegemann where she highlights the nose and then erases the middle. And I use a blending brush to erase it. And it just kind of highlights the nose, which I don't want to do too extremely um, because for me, in my art style, I prefer the lips and the eyes to have more of a focal point. And then I tend to just bring a little bit of highlight into her skin. Even that you can see there just kind of creates um, so much more like interest and depth to her skin. Then I just erase these parts of her chest. Right. And I'll also go in and erase up here because I just kind of want it on her upper chest area. And now we're going to go in and actually, you know what, I'm going to add a bit of highlight today to her chin. Now, I'm going to watch out because I want that shadow to stay. And I also need to get rid of the highlight at the bottom here. And now we're going to bring down the opacity. I actually don't want to do it too much because I really like how it's looking. And then one thing that I'll do at this stage now, which kind of seems a bit backwards, is I'll go back to my blush shading and I will get my inking brush and set it to erase. And then I will just erase a little bit of her nose. I'm going to go onto the um, shading layer underneath that and the opacity is quite low down and then I'm just going to, oh, that's still pretty strong. The opacity doesn't seem to really change on this so I'm going to press very lightly. Now what I will move on to is my highlights. So not my shading highlights, my highlights around the um, body and on the hands and things like that. So I'll set this layer to screen. Then I'll get my inking brush again and I will put it on the right, <laughs> right setting first and then I'll just go in and I'll just do, I think this is a pretty generic uh, way of colouring, I think a lot of people do things like this but it just gives, um, I don't know, it just kind of like finishes your your colouring off a little bit because it's not just skin that you do this on, you can do this on hair. Um, you can do it on the nails, anything. Something I forgot to add to my line work was the little dots that I've been doing underneath. So for the series, I'm just, actually I'm doing it for a lot of my characters lately. I wonder if it's becoming a part of my style. Um, it's had like this little circular thing under her eye. And the next layer that I'm going to do is going to be her eyeshadow. So for this I'm going to get my colour draft back out because this is kind of going to show me how the colours work harmoniously together. So I think we're going to do the main shadow, the main eyeshadow, a dark brown. It's harder for me to do this on closed eyes. I find it easier to do eyeshadows and things like that on open eyes. Then with this, I will erase where I want the lighter colour to be. Okay, then what I'll do is I'll make an another layer underneath that. And I'm probably going to try and keep it as a light pink. Then I'm going to erase any areas that I've gone over. Then what I have been liking doing lately is adding almost like eyeliner, I guess, with my... Um, inking brush. I just really like how it looks. Now I am going to move on to her lips. Then I make a clipping mask layer above this and you can either set this to multiply 
or you can go in with a darker color. I just tend to go in with a bit of a darker color. And then I kind of just add like a bit of a shadow to the bottom lip as well. And then I'll go slightly darker again and I'll just do like a line at the bottom. And then we do the little TTs inside. And then not always, but sometimes I'll add a little highlight onto the bottom lip. Now we'll move on to the hair. This can be really time consuming, just kind of like outlining it and everything. And there are ways around this that you can use like the lasso tool to kind of fill in areas. Done the hair, I will put a clipping mask layer on top of that. And then I will get a darker shade of the hair and use my shading brush again to kind of do like the root area. You want to remember that the hair, say behind here, if we look in closely, this hair is the front here. And this is the back hair, so that's going to tend to be a little bit darker than the front. So for now, quickly, I'm just going to test what this would look like in a lighter shade. And what I would do is I would bring this down. And then above that, I'm going to make a clipping mask, and this time I'm going to set it to multiply. Then I'm going to get my inking brush, and I'm going to colour pick the hair shade. Then I'm just going to... Oh, and I'm just gonna go into any more shaded areas. Then once I've done all the hairs that are behind, I will then go in and kind of define the strands a little bit more. And then at this stage, what we'll do is we'll go in and we will lower the opacity. Then another clipping mask on top of that and you want to go to screen. Then we're just going to colour pick the base layer and we're just going to go in and give a few highlights to her. And then again we're just going to lower the opacity down. And so now I'm starting to rethink her eyeliner. I tend to do this a lot, I'll go back on different things that I've coloured and maybe change them up a bit. So I'm actually thinking more of a white. And then also regarding her lips, I'm thinking that we should darken them a little. And then now what I will do is make another layer. And on this layer, I'm just going to make these little dots white for jewelry that is going to be more of a gold shade so the moon is going to be in this more like white gold kind of color so i'll just go in and color that so for the crystals and things rather than using like any kind of birthstone or anything like that i've just kind of tried to color them to fit in with the color palette scheme and then for her necklace i'm probably going to go for this kind of shade or her neck ribbon or whatever you want to call it. Oh, I've run out of layers. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of my previous marker. We're going to get rid of the colours. And, and there we go. Oh, I'm actually also going to, before I forget, do her hat in this brown too. Oh, I think she looks so nice already. Okay, and now let's colour in her... Hmm, her hat ribbon and her top. So I'm going to go for a bit more of a reddish shade for this. I am not sure about this, so I'm going to go into hue, saturation and brightness and just look at changing it a little bit. We're almost there, so now I need to do all the kind of shadings and things for each of these different layers. I'm going to bring down the opacity of that. I'm going to do another multiply clipping layer and we're going to do her ribbon. I'm just kind of doing each separate part on a different layer. I just realised I've made a mistake here. This is actually her skin. The next or last even, we're going to work on the crystals and then what I'm going to do on the uppermost layer I'm going to get this colour and I'm going to set it to screen and I'm going to get my shading brush, my airbrush and I'm just going to highlight here I'm going to get the uh, shading blend brush again and just kind of erase the centre a bit so we can still see the colour, but this also got a bit of a glow. 
and then I'll bring down that opacity as well to make it seem a little more natural. Okay, I think we're going to go for that colour and I'm actually going to change the eyeshadow to make it more of a like a reddish kind of colour. And then that's the colouring pretty much done. The next step is to colour the line work. <laughs> 